Louisville St. Pierre, Lachine <laughs> and LaSalle. Uh, I don't have my cameraman with me for these videos, so it's a little harder, and I'm doing this from home. I'm doing a meatball recipe today. It's a very easy recipe, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Now, this meatball recipe uses chickpeas, which you add to your ground beef and the other ingredients. But the one we're doing today is with chickpeas that we put through a food processor. Now, I know that with COVID-19, things are tougher for a lot of people. And when I mean tougher, I mean people are relying more on food banks. They have less money. We're not working as much. And I feel sympathetic for you because I'm one of the people that's had home too. And hopefully this will go away sooner than later. In a few seconds, I'm going to show you how to do meatballs using chickpeas and onions and other ingredients step by step. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you like it. Enjoy Ville St. Pierre Lachine. Now as you can see here we have some of the ingredients. For the sauce we're going to use cornstarch, water, some bovril which is a beef stock, concentrate and onion. For the meatballs we're going to be using Italian spices or seasoning, one can of chickpeas, two onions, very finely diced, as you can see here, an egg, a couple of cloves of garlic, salt, pepper, and our chickpeas, which we put through a food processor to bring them very, very fine. All right, for the ground beef, I'm using roughly four, four and a half pounds of ground beef. It's a family pack. And the, the seasoning I'm using is Italian. I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons which is just dried herbs. To that I'm going to add some salt, about a tablespoon. My garlic, you can cut it up or mince it. I'm going to use a garlic press. The egg, we're going to give it a quick beat. almost as if you were making a scrambled egg. This is about two onions that I put through the food processor. This is the chickpeas and as you can see it's pretty fine. It takes a few minutes but you get it. I'm going to add that. I have some fresh pepper. Now I'm going to add my egg to the mix. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mix it. But first I'm going to add my garlic. We're going to mix everything. And like I said, you wash your hands well. And it, the best way to mix this is by hand. And we want it to be all blended in well. So it takes a few minutes and we're not frying, we're baking. We're going to bake them at 350 degrees in the oven for roughly 50 minutes. You can make them small, you can make them big. We're going to make them normal size. After we've mixed it, I'm going to put some plastic wrap on it and I'm going to leave it in the fridge to let all the flavors marinate. Let the spices that we put in, which were dry, absorb some of the liquid. See, that's very nicely mixed. It's even. And now we're just going to let it sit for oh, maybe half an hour in the fridge. And like I said, we're going to put a little plastic wrap on top, just so it doesn't dry out. But now what we're going to do is we're going to make some meatball. I've washed my hands. And you can make them any size you want. They don't have to be too big or too small. It depends on your taste. And because they're going to be baked, I'm using this size. And they're going to be baked at, like I said, 350 degrees for 50 minutes. I've been making these meatballs for a long time. And what's good about this recipe is after you bake them, they hold together better than when you fry them. And they don't burn. 
Okay everybody, here you can see I've made the meatballs. I preheat my oven to 350. I'm going to set my timer for 50 minutes. And into the oven they go. In the meanwhile, we're going to start making our brown gravy onion sauce. I have one very big onion or two normal medium onions. I have a little bit of oil and I have a little bit of margarine. You can use butter. The reason I put oil is because I want my onions to caramelize slowly. I want them first to sweat and then just as soon as they get a little bit of color we're going to add the liquids to make our sauce which is water, bovril and cornstarch. Now cornstarch helps thicken it but first we want the onions to, to become transparent and then just get a little bit of color. We don't want them to burn. So now I'm going to heat this up. Two cups of cold water and as the instructions say, it's two tablespoons per cup of water for stock. So I'm gonna add four. You can add more or less to your taste. Now I'm just mixing the butter and oil. The reason for adding a little bit of oil is that it lowers the smoke point, which means your pan can get hotter and you don't burn your butter or your margarine. And once it sweats out, we will add the onions. Now I start it on high heat, and then I'll lower it once I add in the onions. I like fresh black pepper. Give it a little mix. I put it on low because I want them to lose some of the moisture, and the onions will go transparent. Now in another dish, I have half a cup of water, and I'm going to add roughly a tablespoon of cornstarch to the cold water and I mix it. This is what's going to make our brown sauce thicker. And always mix your, move your onions around so they don't burn. It's a fairly quick sauce, five minutes and it's ready. And now because today I made 40 meatballs roughly we're not going to eat them all in one time. You can take them and freeze them after they've cooled off, after you bake them. Put the portions you want into freezer bags, place them in the freezer, and you'll have meatballs whenever you want. They only take a few minutes to defrost, and it only takes a few minutes to make the sauce. See, now my onions are perfect. This is the right color. They're transparent, and they're just starting to go brown. I'm going to add my stock. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to add my cornstarch slurry, which is here. And you'll add it not all at one time. You're going to add a little, a little, and a little. If you find it gets too thick, you can always add a little bit of water to it. Now, as you can see, it's coming to a boil. A little. Give it a little mix and let it come back to a boil. It has to boil so that it cooks. Now, if you don't have cornstarch, you can use flour. I put two tablespoons, to half a cup of water, I put two tablespoons of flour, and I would mix it very well with the cold water so that there's no lumps. And when you're using flour, it definitely has to come to a boil to cook out the flour, otherwise you're going to taste the raw flour. Now I can lower the heat. It's come to a boil. The longer it cooks, the thicker it's going to get. It's very fragrant. You can use mushrooms. You don't have to use onions. You could use mushroom and onions. I mean, sauces are very simple. You could even make a brown sauce without any onion or mushrooms. Some people put broccoli. It's your imagination. Cooking isn't just following a recipe. It's also using your imagination. Adding things that you personally like in your food. Now my sauce is done. I turn off the heat and I'll just let it finish. And we'll just wait for the meatballs to finish cooking. Okay, so now we're gonna take the meatballs out of the oven. They're done. They're cooked perfectly checked and we 
we'll just plate them now. And using this beautiful brown gravy onion sauce, you can put them on your meatballs, which is what I like it on. This is what it looks like plated. I had added some pickled hot peppers I made in the fall, and I hope you enjoy Ville Saint Pierre.